So now our third set of facts, the cross-section of stock returns. Are there some kind of stocks that do better than other kind of stocks? If so, what are they? And why do they do so? Uh, let's look at the facts again. So I start with uh, a graph. These are portfolios of stocks uh, formed on the basis of size, market capitalization, and also portfolio of bonds. So the little triangles off on the right, those are 10 portfolios of stocks. The small stocks are off on the right, and the big stocks are on the left. For reference, I have three kinds of bonds here, uh, treasury bills, long-term government, and long-term corporate bonds. The axes, well, the vertical axis, let's start with, is the average return. And that average return axis answers our first question. Are there some kinds of stocks that pay returns over long periods of time? This isn't just luck, that pay returns more than other kinds of stocks. Answer, yes, and big time. Notice that the big stocks are paying about 7 to 8% return. The small stocks are paying 17% return. Wow, why don't I just put all my money in small stocks? Well, again, what we're looking for is an economic explanation. Our job is to throw water on all your investment ideas and to understand why that could persist over 50, 60 years. Uh, what is the kind of risk in small stocks that are making people afraid of small stocks? The model for risk, the generic model, is the capital asset pricing model, which, of course, we're going to study and derive and think about. But here is the capital asset pricing model. It says expected returns on I, one stock versus another stock, should be proportional to beta. Beta is the regression coefficient of each stock on the market return. So the way the world should work, according to this theory, is if we put expected returns on the vertical axis and betas on the horizontal axis, that the uh, stocks with higher average return should have higher beta. They should, when the market goes up and down, they should go up and down more. And that's a fairly simple concept to see. Uh, small stocks don't give you any premium over big stocks if they act just like uh, two times big stocks, if you can get the same thing by borrowing money and investing in the big stocks. And that's roughly the way the capital asset pricing model works. So what do you see in our top left graph? You see that for small stocks, uh, yes, there is huge variation across stocks in the kinds of returns you get, but this traditional capital asset pricing model explains that variation quite well. The higher stocks are only earning returns in proportion to their beta. You can synthesize those same returns by just leveraging up a market index. It's not a great investment opportunity. Too bad. Sounded like fun. As with our investigation of the time series, though, uh, the better telescopes have changed the facts dramatically. And that's a set of facts for us to keep in mind as we're developing theories. Here's a graphical version of the value effect, the most central of these new findings from the discount rate paper. On the x-axis here, I've sorted stocks into 10 portfolios. So the value portfolio consists of those stocks with the lowest prices compared to the book value. The growth stocks contain stocks with the highest prices uh, relative to book value. Uh, the value stocks are things like airlines, steel mills, railroads, things with a lot of book assets and not much stock market value. The growth stocks are things like Google, uh, huge stock market value, practically no assets to look around and see. So which one do you want to invest in? I could make that a little quiz. Well, let's look at the facts. What are the returns? That's the blue line. So is there a difference in average return as you go from growth to value? Yes, and it's enormous. We practically double the returns, and interestingly, it's the value stocks that are in the big returns. That's called the good stock versus good uh, company fallacy. Great companies with lots of profits, the stock market knows about it already, and those prices are already high. Too late for you, so that the return to stockholders is actually better taking on the value stocks. Well, that's not surprising, you say. Value stocks are riskier. But look at the beta lines. The beta lines are exactly the same. This was a big, big anomaly, a big puzzle. How is it that the value stocks earn higher returns and don't pay higher betas? The answer is multi-factor models, which is how we now understand betas. 
Fahm and French introduced a three-factor model, a version of the capital asset pricing model with more factors. Yes, there's the market return, but there are also regression coefficients on a new factor of value minus growth stocks, HML, and another new factor, small minus big stocks, SMB. One paper we're going to read carefully this quarter is Fama and French's paper on value effects. So they like to put these facts in tables of numbers, and their table 1A gives you a similar table of numbers. What we've got here is stocks sorted into 25 portfolios based on size and book to market. So the small stocks go that way, and the value stocks go in that direction. So question one, is there a variation in average return between those categories? Yes, huge. 0.37% per month here, 1.08% per month there. A factor of three. You get three times better return up here than you do down there. Wow. Investment opportunity? Well, let's look first and see if there's risk. Turns out there's no capital asset pricing model risk. The betas are all the same. But Fahm and French tell us that they explain these phenomena with table one, part two, the three-factor model, regressions of return on market, SMB, and HML. And the salient fact from this table is that if we look at these B, S, and H coefficients, the S coefficients rise in that direction, the H coefficients rise in the other direction, therefore, say Fama and French, we explain the large expected returns, high expected returns, correspond to those high B's and H's. That's a deep fact for us to meditate on. Now, let's meditate a little bit. Um, where do these models come from? We need to see, how do Fama and French get to call that an explanation? Why are expected returns so high for value stocks and for small stocks? These, quote, explanations, unquote, put the market, HML, and SMB on the right side. So even if these models work, we have to ask ourselves, why does the market pay such a return? Why does the HML portfolio pay such a return? Why does the SMB portfolio uh, pay such a great return? So why is the HML portfolio, why does that portfolio generate a risk premium? Fama and French have a story for that. It's highlighted on page 77. Why is relative distress, HML, a state variable of special hedging to concern to investors. A possible explanation is human capital. So they tell a story here that people are worried about their jobs falling apart at the same time as HML falls apart. They're making an economic connection to try to have the economic underpinnings of those models. Third question we have to ask ourselves. Fama and French call this not just a model of expected returns, they call it a model of returns. There's a factor structure. All the stock returns are correlated with each other. When you read their first paper, they say this is a model of returns and expected returns. What do we know about the factor structure in stock returns out of this paper? That's our set of cross-sectional facts. Uh, like the time series facts, our facts are exploding. Big quick summary, there is strong variation across different kinds of stocks in the expected returns, the risk premiums that they pay. Strong variations also in currencies, bonds, all sorts of different assets. Yes, indeed, you can earn a high risk premium in some and low risk premium in other. The way we explain these things is with factor models of this sort, uh, where expected returns are supposed to only depend on some regression coefficient. We'll have to learn about those models, and we'll have to try to understand the economic fundamentals of where those models and where those risk premia come from.